Okay, um, thank you, Tim. Um, my name is Amir. I, uh, um, my background is um, electrical engineering with a focus on control in robotics. Um, uh, I have been with Kwanzaa uh, in the past two years and I've been working on uh, um, robotics, telerobotics, and haptics um, interfaces. Um, and I'm giving you technical presentation on Kwanzaa's open architecture control framework and I'm um, here with my colleague, uh, Dr. Gilbert Lai. Um, Hello, thank you, Amir. Uh, this is uh, Gilbert Lai. Uh, I'm also a system and controls engineer here at Quanzer, uh, also about uh, two years been here, and uh, my background is in uh, robotics, uh, specializing in uh, UVAV and uh, tele-robotics. And again, so we will be, uh, hopefully, be able to show you uh, a little bit of what we do here in Quanzer about uh, tele-operation, especially with our open architecture control framework. Thank you. Um, so I start the uh, technical part of the presentation uh, with a uh, some sort of uh, introduction to um, some of the uh, rapid uh, uh, device integration um, options uh, that you guys uh, will have uh, using our uh, like using Quanzer's um, technology. Um, so uh, in this slide, you will see um, uh, on top left. The corner of the picture um, on the slide, you will see um, Quanzer's uh, high definition haptic device called HD Square. Um, um, and this device is actually, um, uh, it's a seven degree of freedom. Um, although you have other options like five degrees and six degrees of freedom, we're going to talk about uh, details of this device later on. Um, you will see um, a Phantom Omni and also a force enabled. Um, joystick. These are um, some of the haptic devices that you can use uh, when you integrate uh, with your system and as well as some six uh, degrees of freedom robotic devices such as uh, different models of the KUKA uh, robotic uh, platforms, Denso, as well as Kinova's Jacko and uh, the most recent one, uh, Miko, uh, you will see in this picture. Um, so what we can do with Quanzer's technology is that you can integrate these devices, you can design your own controllers and you can use them in uh, various haptics uh, simulations uh, as well as teleoperation um, um, control systems. Um, so in the next slide, I'm going to talk about the overview of the teleoperation um, this is one example that you will see. Uh, the teleoperation is between uh, a HD squared ha uh, haptic device uh, that I talked briefly about uh, in the previous slide, and also we have a uh, six degree of freedom uh, Denso robotic platform. Therefore, um, the the reason for this overview um, slide is for you to understand how the open architecture framework works here. Um, so you will see uh, the HD square device that we're going to talk about it uh, later during the presentation as well. Um, it has uh, six different um, encoders for different joints of the uh, platform. and. Um, it, as well as six um, high definition um, motors. So uh, when the operator holds the handle and moves the handle around um, using the uh, uh, kinematics we uh, uh, and from the sensing of the encoders, we have the X, Y, Z roll PGR of the uh, operator's hand as well as a, another extra degree of freedom, which is a, a usually a, um, uh, for controlling uh, grippers, if you have for the arm. Uh, so we get all these information, and we send the information through um, uh, the, the cables to the uh, Quanzer's um, digital to anal analog to digital uh, cards, and then using Quark software, um, you're uh, you're actually, you can use this information in real time, design your controllers or haptic simulation system. And uh, you will see all the information uh, on the screen for yourself as, as well as uh, sending the information 
in real time um, through the con denser controller, for example, in this case, to the denser robotic arm. So most of the uh, uh, application is can be uh, done in um, a one to five kilohertz update rate, and then you can control the denso arm in one kilohertz. And the extra um, force feedback information enables you um, to have a bilateral teleoperation, which sends the force and tor uh, moments uh, using different ATI force torque sensors. We send the information uh, obviously to the uh, sensor uh, interface or amplifier box, and then we um, using various NI DAC cards, we can read the information and again, the, all this information go to the Quark uh, software and then you can use uh, the forces to send it back uh, to the um, HD squared haptic uh, device. So one different options that you have, um, you can actually use Quark in uh, MATLAB Simulink software or you can use RCP on um, lab view or you can use our C++ APIs for these devices and this is what we mean by open architecture framework because it enables you to um, utilize Quark or our OCP software um, and, and um, make your own controller do uh, any testing and uh, it makes all the prototyping um, procedure uh, quick and rapid. In the next slide, uh, we have uh, this example in a video. Um, you will see the operator is holding the SG square using a pedal, it enables the control. And you will see um, all the commands are mapped to the same um, coordinate framework of the Denso arm, uh, both linear and uh, angular motion. And here we show how the force feedback is sent to the HD squared for controlling uh, the HD squared in a bilateral mode. And um, he, this part obviously shows how accurate you can uh, send your motion to the robotic device. So we are writing um, the operator here that you cannot see is um, a few meters away from the HD squared and uh, from the Denso robot. Using the HD squared, he's uh, riding remotely and then sensing how the uh, pen is moving on the uh, um, paper. And um, all these haptic feedback with the very accurate um, haptic device, you can uh, do a lot um, in terms of operation, teleoperation haptic. Uh, so thank you, uh, Amir. Yes. Um, just to reinforce the open architecture teleoperation uh, framework that Quanta offer uh, allows you to rapidly, you know, integrate different kinds of uh, devices together. Uh, so we've shown a sample of uh, the ones that we currently support, but also because of the open uh, architecture nature of the framework, uh, if you have an existing uh, robotic device or uh, input haptic device, uh, it could easily uh, connect to the framework, the rest of the framework through the uh, open API, like for example in the C++ API to uh, connect various different uh, devices together into a tele-operations uh, application. Thank you, Tim. Um, so, uh, in order to emphasize what Gilbert mentioned before the break, um, on this slide, um, as I mentioned before, you have multiple devices that you can use for your op open architecture framework control. Um, uh, what I want to mention here is um, that Quanzer has um, its own uh, driver uh, for all these devices, and then we provide uh, forward kinematics, DH parameters, uh, inverse kinematics, as well as um, some uh, preliminary as well as advanced control uh, examples with these devices. And as Gilbert mentioned, if you have another devices, for example, that you have your own, it has its own um, open API that you can use, you can uh, get all the information, use uh, Quark uh, stream communication and then send all the information um, to um, to a device that Quanzer provides the driver for. And then you can uh, basically integrate sort of um, uh, easily any sort of devices that you have for your control, like teleoperation, haptics, um, 
interface. Uh, so we go to uh, the demos that we have here. We start with um, HD squared. Yeah, so HD squared, um, as I mentioned, is uh, Quanzer's high definition haptic device. Um, as you see in the video, um, the, the um, HD squared has um, a capsule mechanism to achieve higher um, torque. Um, and we have count, uh, this device that you have uh, is um, actually counterbalanced. So it has counterbalance weight for full gravity. As you, may, as you can see, if you leave it, um, uh, it stays the way you left it before. And then, um, yeah, so this is the five DOF, the uh, default option for the HD squared. And uh, we can uh, work with the clients to change the handle for various applications. For example, we have had uh, biomedical needle insertion application and we work with the clients to change the handle. Uh, if you change the handle, obviously the, the uh, uh, ca uh, ca counterbalance weight should be changed for full gravity compensation. And um, uh, so we, uh, also we have auxiliary analog and digital uh, inputs on the HG squared. So uh, it's on the other side of uh, the, the video that you see, on the other side of HG squared, uh, we have auxiliary input channels, and then you can connect various devices. And for this case, we have a safety um, e-stop as well as a uh, um, pedal uh, connected to it. We use the pedal to enable and disable HD squared. Uh, at this point, we start our demos with a, uh, a deformable sphere demo. This is a haptic uh, demo that we can show. Um, as you can see, the handle is um, simulated or using Quanzer's visualization toolbox. This is a 3D visualization toolbox that you can always use. And as you can see, um, my colleague is moving the HD squared, uh, rotating it around the, the sphere. Uh, you can um, visualize all this information as well as you can make your uh, haptic feedback, send it back to the HD squared. So if you Gilbert's actually throw the HD squared to the um, ball, it comes back because of the force. And if you work with the HD squared directly, you can feel the force moving into the uh, sphere or um, it actually doesn't go in, it slides on, on the side. You can uh, feel the force and the moments. Um, that was the, uh, uh, the first um, demo that we had for you using Quanzer's 3D viewer. Uh, the next demo that we provide is um, about the Phantom Omni. Uh, sort of similar to what I described for um, HD squared, the Phantom Omni. Um, if you get the open architecture uh, uh, bundle, you will get the forward kinematics, the um, DH parameters of the Phantom. You, can, you get the inverse kinematics joint, uh, and you have access to joint level PD, PID controller. You have access to Cartesian space control as well. Here is, a, a, again, using Quanzer 3D visualization, we have um, a, a very cool demo uh, using a ping pong um, ball. And uh, Gilbert is moving the uh, um, Phantom Omni. And you will see the, uh, the effect on the 3D visualization. And he could feel the forces. And then, in this case, the ball fell and the, the game was over. But you can run it again. You will see the, uh, um, uh, the haptic uh, sort of how the haptic interface is implemented and visualized. Um. So when the ball hits the, um, the pedal, you feel the impact. So that's the force feedback. This is a virtual force feedback that the user can feel by uh, programming the, uh, the force feedback through the uh, haptic devices. Thank you. Thank you. So the next um, sort of demo that we, um, we prepared for you is a, a teleoperation. Usually the, um, 
what we provide are the haptic devices in the robotic arms. Uh, that you use the haptic devices um, to send the commands and get the force feedback uh, to a robotic platform such as Denso, uh, ARM, or KUKA, or Jacko. Here what we did for the demo is actually using the Phantom Omni as a haptic device and use the HD Square as a robotic platform that, uh, to show you how you can control it. Here the, um, Gilbert is running the uh, teleoperation mode. You will see the uh, HD Squared motion. He actually uses the button on the uh, Phantom Omni to enable and disable. So uh, if you see Gilbert is moving but the HD Squared is not moving, he disabled to, to move to a uh, comfortable position. Whenever he enables it, the, the action is enabled. So um, both linear motion, right, left, and as well as the angular motion here, you can see um, roll, pitch, and yaw. You can control all of them. At the same time, if there is any gripper integrated with the system or the HD any device attached to the HD squared, such as an actuated <coughs> device, he can use the um, button on one of the uh, one of the buttons of the uh, Phantom Omni to control that actuated device. So you have uh, the summary is actually you have access to all uh, sensors as well as actuators on um, most of the devices that we provide, and you have access to the as I said to the DH parameters to kinematics, inverse kinematics, Jacobian, inverse Jacobian, to apply the forces in um, either the um, joint mode or the Cartesian space mode. And it makes it very simple for research, specifically for research and teaching purposes. Uh, Gilbert is actually trying to move the handle back to the um, uh, handle holder of the HD squared device. <laughs> so um, that's the uh, live demo that we have prepared. Uh, switching back to our so what uh, just to summarize, what we have shown is that we have a set up a demo for uh, using the HD Square as a uh, input device, uh, virtual contact for uh, uh, an application that provides virtual contact, uh, force feedback information uh, application. We also used uh, uh, the Phantom Omni in a similar application where we have generated virtual force with virtual contacts, uh, taking advantage of the haptic feedback capability of the device so that we feel the different forces. And then the final uh, demo that we have uh, them uh, shown is controlling, basically uh, uh, integrating the Phantom Omni with the HD Square, having the Omni device has, the, uh, in this case, a master device, and the uh, HD Square as the uh, slave device where we are controlling through using the uh, the motors on the HD Square as uh, the actuator and controlling it through the uh, Phantom Omni. And I want to add that um, you will have. Um, all the information required um, for your research purposes for HD squared, for Phantom Omni, and for uh, various open architecture devices that we provide on our website. So if you go to our website, you can find all this information for, for these devices. Um, so the, the, the next slide, we have prepared some videos of um, some of our application as well as um, some other uh, application in different universities. Uh, so Gilbert, if you can please play. So we start with the uh, ping pong um, ball teleoperation application. Here um, the user is actually holding the HD squared, moving back and forth, and he can feel the force. You will see the, the motion is um, the same as the motion of the answer is. So here we're demoing a system from Quanzer where uh, we have a small Omni robot and a large Denso robot connected with a force sensor that's giving uh, haptic feedback. So we're controlling a robot over here, or this robot to control the larger robot, and we can feel the force pressing on here. 
So it's interacting with both uh, virtual and real objects. Uh, and this is uh, where this place? At Centennial College. Thank you. Yeah. This is actually, you can see um, different types of KUKA arms on the left and right. One of them is actually moving. One of them, we have the picture for you. So we, uh, we, we are teleoperating these devices um, using an open architecture. This is again Denso. Um, what we're gonna show you is the 3D visualization here. Um, so as you see, um, the SG square is again used for this device, but we can visualize it in real time. Um, on the left corner, on the bottom, you will see the, uh, the Denso arm moving the same. It's actually from a different view, but it's moving the same as the, the actual Denso in real time. Okay, we have the unilateral teleoperation here. My master device is the Phantom Omni, the force feedback joystick, and the slave device is the Jackal. And also at the same time, I have the visualization of Jackal in real time. So it basically shows the exact position of the Jackal in the virtual environment. So I'll start the teleoperation here, and as you can see, can move the jackal using the phantom omni in all the directions. Y, Z. And also at the same time, you can see the virtual jackal in the visualization moves. So if you that I'm gonna be moving the virtual robot using my joystick. This, this video is um, showing the dual arm teleoperation example. Um, so the, a little bit of uh, overview of this system. We have a dual arm system using two Kinova Jacko arms um, uh, equipped with two sixth off force torque sensors uh, between the grippers and the wrist. And um, you will, uh, and the grippers have three fingers, both of them. So this, the main view is from the uh, the back, and on the left corner and the bottom of the video, you will see the operator um, using a head-mounted display and, and two HD squared devices here. Um, so the two HD squared devices, the one on the left is controlling the left arm that appears on the right side of the main uh, view. So if you play the video, uh, you can see the, the operator is holding the HT square with a gripper control attached to the handle. And the operator is very accurately controlling the left arm to hold the um, a bottle of the water and he's moving the uh, cup down and uh, pouring the water in the cup. At all this time, the user is feeling the force and the moments in real time and seeing the real uh, live video. So this is one of the applications that we wanted to show you. Um, and uh, so this was um, uh, the uh, videos that we prepared for you. As a summary, I think um, uh, what we showed to you is the Quanzer open architecture technology that enables you to integrate multiple devices um, in real time and uh, more importantly it enables you to use uh, MATLAB Simulink, LabVIEW, C++ um, that what we call a rapid control prototyping uh, framework. You can use um, multiple devices from uh, like force torque sensors from ATI and you can use uh, various NI um, cards so we, uh, we support that and all of them are integrated using our Quark software and you get all the information you design your own controller you um, analyze uh, the device the stability of the system and you design your haptic teleoperation 
control system in real time.